Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome to Going In Raw Dirt Sheet. The place is going to come for your very thin wrestling news this week. Not a lot going on. Well, between the holidays and I'm sure Wrestle Kingdom 12, which we covered yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot going on. And what was going on was dominated by New Japan Pro Wrestling's largest show of the year. I kind of feel that we're in the calm before the storm. Or on the lead up to the Rumble. There'll be a lot of rumors about possible surprise entrance. Ooh, that's going to be fun. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So anyways, this is the Dirt Sheet. Uh, we're available right here at YouTube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Be sure, if you want to make sure, I like it. People hitting me on Twitter and in our comments on YouTube all the time saying, did I spit on you? I'm yes. sorry. I apologize for my projectile saliva. Saying, hey, uh, YouTube uh, desubscribed us. So make sure. Unsubscribed. Desubscribed us. Not a word. Uh, Non-subscribed us. Mm. Hit the little notified bell. Yeah, subscribe button. Make sure you're always notified when there's new going in our content. And of course, uh, we're available also on all the great podcast apps out there. We are. If you want a really easy, cheap and quick way to uh, support going in raw, hop on your little iOS podcast app on your iPhone or iPad. Leave us a rating or a review. It really helps boost the profile of the show. Ever since I've been pushing that, I feel like a lot of you guys have been doing that. Where are we in the rankings right now? I think we're like in the 160s earlier oh, today. Cool. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. It's People cool. are really, they're really hip Have you that. mentioned the pro wrestling tees yet? No, why don't you go ahead and do that? All right, we're also at pro wrestling tees at prowrestlingtees.com slash going in raw. Yeah. Bunch of designs. We should put some new designs up. Yeah, I, I like that. I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah, we'll, we'll that. put some new designs up sometime soon. Um, Next week is kind of like first... First full week back yeah. from the holidays. Yeah, we've kind of taken it easy this week a little bit. Well, Although we didn't really take it easy because we stayed up like half the night to watch Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a yearly tradition now. January 4th, the first week back, we're going to have to compensate for the fact that we have to stay up really, Pretty really much late. Yeah. Most, if, if, if not all the night. Anyways, as you said earlier, not a ton of news this week, mm -hmm. um, but we'll get into what we got immediately. Steve. Yes. Is Braun Strowman going to win the title at the Royal Rumble? Well, there is a picture circulating online that, yes, spoiler alert, Braun Strowman evidently walking into Elimination Chamber is going to be new champion. As your universal champion. So, yes, you mentioned there was this uh, still going around the Internet. So it was posted to our Twitter several times. Um, and it was purporting to be a screen cap of a graphic run on Supersport TV in South Africa, mm -hmm. which featured a main event for Elimination Chamber. Uh, featuring, as you mentioned already, Universal Champion Braun Strowman, but yeah. also Finn Balor, mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. Roman Reigns, yeah. Cesaro, odd, and Cass. Even more odd. Yeah, Cass is, is still out with injury as far as we know. Yeah. Cesaro's in a very successful tag team. <laughs> yeah. Finn Balor's not doing anything near the Universal title picture right now. Yeah. And but people, you know, ooh, ooh, scoop. Look at this, Stephen Larson, a scoop. Yes. Is this real? Now, without even knowing that, that what this actually came from, it was pretty easy to say this is completely full of crap. Yeah, uh, but we know where it came from now. Yeah, thanks internet. To, thanks to WrestleZone, um, they're reporting that the still was taken from a YouTube video posted in August called WWE Elimination Chamber 2018 Dream Match Card. Um, that's the source. Mm -hmm. It is fake. Well, yeah. I mean, someone really did it, but it's not an official WWE uh, right. still, which is yeah. what people were trying to say this was it's akin to them using uh on my personal channel youtube.com forward slash mf steve here i have a still where a bunch of different ballers are fighting each other it's as if somebody's saying hey there's gonna be a six-man all finn Balor, Balor match versus Balor versus Balor versus Balor versus Balor versus Balor at wrestlemania and then super sport tv which sounds fake in south africa you know they pull that and they say oh look at this match that's gonna happen no oh that's fake you can't even do that i don't think 
technology is at the point where you can replicate Finn Balor's. No. Not in real life, anyways. No, only in video games. Only in video game form. So, no. I mean, look, as much as I'd love to see Braun Strowman walk in an elimination chamber as Universal Champion, there isn't really even it's an opportunity for um, him to do also, that. Also, uh, Brock Lesnar is currently not advertised for Elimination Chamber. Great. He's not supposed to be there. Yeah, so no, they're not going to scrap their plans for Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Uh, to have Braun Strowman go over at the Rumble. No. Kane will be eating that pin, the and Brock way, Lesnar will be pinning him. The only way the plans for Mania will change is if Reigns or Lesnar get injured between now and then. Yeah. Or like That's the only way, or wellness policy violation. Possibly a 2% botch finish. Yeah. Like a Braun Strowman <coughs> accidentally, like, you know, destroys Kane's hip during a power slam. And, and he Bro- can't kick out, and, and Brock is... Purple far, Brock Lesnar is, like, you too know... Too far away from the ring. 20 to, yards to away. it up. Yeah, there is that possibility. But even Braun seems like a smart guy. He might do the thing where he like picks up Kane he wants and wants to inflict says, more punishment. I'm not done with you. And then he turns to the ref. What am I supposed to do? And then Brock hurries back to the ring. <laughs> hits an emergency F5 win. There you go. Exactly. That's so how it can even happen. Two percent botch finish is highly unlikely. Yeah, at this point. highly unlikely. So that first story took us all of five minutes. Yep. To let's dispel. talk about. Let's talk about WrestleMania then. Okay, that sounds good. So Daniel Bryan was talking. We've mentioned this in a couple other shows, but we can get into it a little bit more uh, here on the dirt sheet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel Bryan spoke with Sports Illustrated, mm-hmm. um, and you know, whenever he speaks to anybody, the topic of his in-ring return always pops up. And so, when asked about it, he said, "Quote: I assume that if I don't wrestle by WrestleMania, I probably won't be wrestling with WWE at all. That's my assumption." Spoke in a, a bit more detail about the process of getting cleared saying, quote, there are a lot of issues with me getting cleared by WWE. They have a very strict protocol, which is a good thing, but the timeline of all that happening was not the best for me. It's an interesting situation that will develop. Yeah. Um, it's interesting he pinpoints WrestleMania. I mean, it makes sense if they're going to have him wrestle. He's, uh, the, you know, want to have him come back at the, the, the most important and largest show of the year. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I think Meltzer said at one point that the, the wrestling observer himself yes that p- the possibility of him maybe wrestling at SummerSlam um, I don't know if it had been floated internally within WWE but you know there had been some chatter about it mm-hmm. um, and I've said uh, I said on our uh, Smackdown recap that I kind of feel like and this is me looking way too much into things that there's just been a lot more talk in recent months yeah about him yeah not being cleared, yeah. how much he wants to come back, like every opportunity, more so uh, than had been the case just, you know, the seven, eight months ago. Yeah. The last four months, it seems like Daniel Bryan is making a lot more media appearances. Every media appearance, he's talking about wanting to wrestle, the, the, the problems he's had getting cleared by WWE, his success getting cleared by basically everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um and this keeps coming up again and again and again and again and again. It seems like it's, I swear, like once a week we have yeah. some show where we talk about Daniel Bryan being cleared, Daniel Bryan not cleared. So there's also the ramping up of his role on SmackDown. There seemed to be kind of a quasi heel turn for him. Yeah, maybe a bit. I mean, he put the top face AJ Styles in a handicap match. In a handicap match heels. against two heels. And seemed then, to revel in it. Yeah, he, he celebrated really it. really enjoy that. And the crowd seemed, to, according to our inside sources, Karen, who's just there, said a lot of people were doing the no chant in response. Until he started doing yes. Yeah. And then when he's doing yes, you got to do yes. You can't not do yes. you got to do the yes. Yeah. There's some more interesting bits here to this uh, interview here on Sports Illustrated. He said, um, the the so because we're, we're kind of ignorant in terms of like what – what is cleared? What is what is what is it when he gets cleared? Yeah. And he says, it's not a black and white answer. I actually already read the rest of that. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that quote in here. Did you actually put that quote in here? Yeah. Oh, there are a lot of issues getting about me. Yeah, but you didn't say the black and white issue. See, that it's very ill as a metaphor. <laughs> it's not yes or no. It's how much of a yes can we be, I think. It's not two polar extremes. It's a spectrum. Right, exactly. I and understand. so, yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, but what do you think about my conspiracy theory that they're putting out all sorts of no he's not wrestling he's not wrestling and just amp- amping that up so when he is cleared and he is announced it's going to be a huge shock to everybody I would say that I would be very surprised I mentioned this in Smackdown recap I'd be very surprised if the WWE would be using the concussion protocols as storyline fodder in that respect I just don't see it. But then if they're making plans for him to be at SummerSlam, 
You know, I mean, it, it sounds like it sounds like internally they're preparing for him to be cleared. Yeah. Um, which I would think if it's out of the realm of possibility, they wouldn't be doing. Yep. Which would mean it's within the realm of possibility that he could be cleared. Um, WrestleMania is around the corner, kind of. It's in late March, early April, whatever. Early it is. April. Late early late. April. Um, I would. I mean, I would have thought that the 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 actual quote would have been. I assume that if I don't wrestle by SummerSlam, yeah, I won't be contract wrestling. Contract is up in September. Yeah, like a month later. But maybe he just thinks, okay, so, uh, WrestleMania top show of the year. If they don't mm-hmm. put me on that card, they probably won't. Here's another thing to consider. Uh, Daniel Bryan's kind of uh, heelish uh, 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 demeanor mm-hmm. at the end of SmackDown this week um, uh, could potentially be setting up something with AJ Styles down the line. Yeah. Um, and if they do it right, they don't really have to do full blown heel Daniel Bryan. They can just have one face mad at another face without either of them resorting to any sort of heel tactics. Yeah. Could do that. Yeah, no, they could. It, I mean, it's it's the battle of points of view, yeah. the, the battles of per, or of perspective. Yes, they could do it because here's the thing: trying to get people on board with Daniel Bryan as a heel returning a is a non-starter. Yeah, that's a non. You're, that's not going to happen. And so, I mean, they could do that. Even you know, when we look at the motivations involved with everybody doing what they're doing. Everybody has sound reasons for what they're doing. You can't really be mad at anybody for doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Even Shane McMahon, when he's appeared passive aggressive, it hasn't been overtly heel. And it, a lot of people still want to cheer for Shane McMahon. Yeah. It's just they don't want to cheer for Shane McMahon in lieu of Daniel Bryan yes. because he's kind of top guy to cheer for yeah. battling there with AJ Styles. Yeah, let's talk about uh, what Melser had to say in this week's newsletter about Daniel Bryan and a potential heel turn in where he speculated. Oh, can, can talk about conspiracy theories. Yeah. Truth exposed. Speculated that maybe they were turning him heel. So if he were to leave when his contract is up, it would tarnish uh, his prospects. I don't believe that. For no, a not for a second. I don't think they would try to sabotage. See, the people, dude. people are savvy these days. They know of a thing called kayfabe. They know that the Daniel Bryan on TV, if he's heel, that's not really Daniel Bryan. Cause for one thing, he was an in Indies. He'll be Brian Danielson again. Yeah. I think that, I think, if anybody thought that was the, I don't, I don't see anybody thinking that's even within the realm of possibility. Yeah, I don't. That's that's bizarre to me. Yeah, that that would even be suggested by the wrestling observer himself. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I I don't I don't put any credence towards that. And on top of that, they'd have to know that would freaking backfire anyway. Oh, like they tried yes. to do that. I mean, Dan, here's the thing about Daniel Bryan. They have to understand anyways. You could have him do the most dastardly things, and he will still be wildly entertaining. Yeah. You know? He could burn down the Wyatt compound and be wildly entertaining. What's the most... Let me ask you. What's the most heel thing that anybody's done? Okay, I guess maybe, like, recently, gender pointing out Shinsuke's funny faces and being mildly racist about it. I don't think that Daniel Bryan would ever agree to do that. No, he would not. I don't think he'd ever agree. Give me something else. That's like a really heel thing that people have done lately. Uh, Samoa Joe uh, threatening Paul Heyman. That was pretty heelish. Oh, it was wildly entertaining. It was. And Daniel Bryan would be wildly entertaining doing that. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of something that was heelish that, but wasn't entertaining. I mean, what guy? Sami Zayn saying yep. Oh, man. I even wonder. I think Daniel Bryan could probably be entertaining doing that, too. Because so he'd always have that cheesy smile on his yeah. face. He, I think, I think Daniel Bryan would actually probably enjoy... Being a heel for his final run in the WWE, if that's what this is, and people would people would be entertained by it. Yeah. And on top of here, if if you want the, the best way to hamper Daniel Bryan, if if this is if if that's your line of thought, let's let's when Daniel Bryan does leave, let's get him in the worst position possible. Best thing to do is just keep him either boring or off TV. Mm-hmm. You know, like don't don't give him any exposure. Yep. Or do what they've kind of been doing this whole time, just keep him as kind of a boring GM who doesn't really have a lot to do. Lately, that hasn't been the case. Lately, yes, he's been much more involved. Months prior, yes. Right, yeah, you know, just keep him kind of boring. And then, yeah. you know, just pff, with a whimper, not a bang, Yeah, um, let him go. But I don't, you know, they're not doing that. They're having him be involved in storylines and it's getting the crowd amped up in some manner or other. Yes. So... I don't know. I, I don't lend a lot of credence to that. No, I don't either. I mean, I wouldn't put it past the WWE to try something like that with somebody who they have like real animosity towards. 
But I just don't see that with Daniel Bryan, you know? Like, he did his time. He can't wrestle because they're not going to clear him. I, I mean, know. that would be incredible. Like, way over the line petty for them to do something yes. like that. I yes. just don't see it. No, I don't see it either. So, anyways. Next. Next. We've been wondering. Oh, exciting. Since the May Young Classic. Why hasn't WWE signed Candice LeRae? She's fantastic. Hey, she's fantastic. We're both fans of her work. She's a fantastic wrestler. Um, she's married to another fantastic wrestler. Are they married or just together? They're no, married. they're married. They're married. Johnny Gargano. Johnny wrestling himself. He's signed with WWE as part of NXT, so it, it seemed like she was the May Young Classic. Her husband signed with WWE. It would make all the sense in the world for her to sign with WWE, and we were wondering why. Because previously we'd heard that she'd be used maybe for like enhancement. Boo. Talent. Jobber, boo. But according to the Wrestling Observer himself, um, Candice LeRae, should be signing with NXT soon Ooh. as she is going through, quote, the process. The process. I guess of signing. Has, that, has a wrestler taken that name as a nickname? Who is that man? He is the process. So they start, like, at the very bottom. Um, yeah. Like, they literally have all like have some talent, and they go and relearn. Yeah. So that they have far less talent. Yeah. And then eventually they, they accrue more talent. Sometimes yeah, right. they get rid of some their, their, their talent. They just learn to find room for more talent or like if you want to get through me you got it or if you want to get past me you're going through the process oh i was doing like this philadelphia 76ers thing so then you just like that was the process you would sign a lot of paperwork and present it to I that like wrestler my idea better this yeah. seems more dynamic yeah that's all right i like that too anyway so uh, uh maybe she'll debut at the rumble i think that'd be fantastic oh that'd be great there's like a mil aren't there like more spots than no it's like 12 versus 18 there's yeah, like there's 18. 18 for sure spots assuming there are title matches yeah for each uh, woman's title yeah so 12 perspective spots oh man absolutely for the woman's rumble have her take three of these spots yeah she gets eliminated comes back yeah gets eliminated comes back wins. yeah yeah wins yeah beats oscar yeah yeah i'd be fine with that that's like the, she's like the one wrestler i'd be cool Beating Oscar right now. Candice LeRae is the best. Candice LeRae is fantastic. What was the quote from Cody Rhodes? Oh, man. It was something along the lines of... Uh, he's I've, only been overpowered or... He's only been uh, shocked by the level of strength by two people in his career. One was like some big hoss of some sort, and the other is Candice LeRae. He was like, she manhandled me. Yeah. Something like that. Huh. Yeah, she, she's the best. Dude. Yeah, she's awesome. I can't wait to see that. Um, you don't have it here in your notes, but um, uh, Jazzy Gabert oh, was yeah. on the Edge and Christian podcast. And apparently they were all ready to get her a, a contract for NXT. But she had a... Three herniated discs. In her back or her neck? Um, in her neck, I think. And she is currently raising funds to... Get uh, surgery because... Get surgery. I on the podcast, Edge and Christian suggested that she do that. Yeah, and then the Wrestling Observer himself noted that, that could be a lengthy rehab process up to 14 months, apparently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, given that she's, uh, you know, her, she's a little bit up there in age. I think she's probably mid-late 30s, probably. Um, you know, who knows what her prospects are like. But also, given that I don't think that her wrestling style necessarily would... I, I don't know. I would think that, you know, she's a big powerhouse. I would think that would probably be in her favor in terms of being up there in age oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and coming back. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, find her on the Twitter. Yes. And, uh, you know, maybe help her out if you yes. have some extra funds laying around. Yes. She's fantastic. She is. Um, there could be someone else coming to WWE, Steve. And that person, Bobby Lashley. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Yes. Dave Meltzer, again, the Wrestling Observer himself, spoke earlier this week, I think, on Wrestling Observer Radio, about the likelihood of Lashley making a return to WWE in the near future, saying there's a good chance it could happen once Lashley is no longer in contract with Impact. I'm pretty sure this could probably happen even if he is under contract with Probably. Impact. They're not going to do anything. <laughs> um, Impact uh, seems to be parting ways with some of their higher-priced talent of late. Yeah. So uh, it, Meltzer speculated, uh, even just last month, December, that both Lashley and EC3. Oh, I'm excited about that one. Once their contracts are up or they're let go. So we've seen, I mean, look, we've seen, I mean, look, EC3 was Derek Bateman in the early NXT. Yeah. Bobby Lashley obviously had a fantastic career with the WWE in the first place. ECW champion, I think. He won the US, uh, US Intercontinental, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so that would be fantastic. I mean, he was... He's one of the highlights these days for Impact. He had one of the more high-profile feuds involving his American, what is it called, American Alpha team? America First team or something like that, right? 
American, American, American top team. American, American top team. That's what it is. Yeah. You're supposed to be the impact guy here. It's all just in one ear out the other. America top team with Dan Lambert um, playing up a heel role and Lashley saying, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he's sort of, uh, he's not sure he wants to continue with pro wrestling or go to, go to MMA exclusively. And it was a fun thing they had with Moose and Stefan Bonner. He got involved. Um, it was actually, it was, it was a lot of fun. So it really turned me back on to Lashley. Yeah. I'd kind of prefer to see Moose sign with NXT, though. Oh, yeah. I want to see that happen. I'm curious to know what the terms of Moose's contract are. Because Impact, I read, or I think uh, Wrestling Observer, somebody said that Impact is turning now. They're letting go of like these long-term yeah. high price contracts and in more of a favor of a day rate type thing. Yeah, and Moose signed a three-year like deal. A three-year deal. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll maybe they're going to restructure that and open that up to, for him to go to NXT. Saw him palling around with Apollo Crews and Ricochet. Yeah. So I want to see that as a faction. That'd be great. I haven't heard any more on New Year's Eve Hatgate. Oh yeah. From Apollo Crews. We'll have to No updates via Twitter. We'll have to look in, into that. Maybe we'll reach out to Moose. So let's assume that Lashley and EC three are on their way to WWE sometime next year. I think I read that EC 3s contract's up next spring. Where do they go? EC three to NXT? Oh, for sure. And and Lashley on the main, main. roster. He what, doesn't what uh that. what show? Raw, SmackDown. I think SmackDown. I think SmackDown needs to build their monster division because they don't really have that now. And so I think Lashley would be a good guy to bring in. He is the kind of guy, and I say this all the time. I said said this with Shelton Benjamin. We've said this with Bobby Roode. Bring him in as, you know, get that initial face pop for the return. Mm -hmm. Turn him heel very soon after Mm -hmm. that. That'd be so Mm -hmm. much fun. SmackDown needs... Top heels, they man. Need a, they need a heel that actually instills fear in people. I know. Because, I mean, the closest they have for, to that is... Baron and Jinder. Yeah. And they don't really inspire a lot of people. No. I mean, Baron, I bet Baron's probably at the top there. But still, you just know you can roll them up and you'll probably win. I know. Like, Sammy and Kevin Owens are basically a comedy act at this yeah. point. So, I mean, if you're talking tag division, you got the Bludgeon Brothers. They qualify. <laughs> Doon, 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 doon. So, anyways, I think SmackDown would be great for him. I think Agreed. Derek Bateman making a return to NXT, I think, would be well, all you know, sorts he, of fun. Well, uh, he trademarked the EC3 name. I'd love for him to come back as EC3. You just know NXT, they're weird. You know, Chris they have Hero, been Chris, as weird lately. Chris Hero made a big name for himself. He came back as Cassius Ono, but something tells me that might have been up to him. Yeah, I think I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if he did that so he can retain that, yeah, the yeah, rights yeah, to yeah. Chris Hero exclusively because yeah. he still has a pro wrestling T store. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it'd be great regardless of who he comes back as. I freaking love him, man. He's great. It'd be funny if he came as EC3 because he's supposed to be, what, Dixie Carter's yeah. nephew or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's right, yeah. But she's WWE canon now. I guess because she was in that Kurt Angle documentary. <laughs> exactly. Bring her in as, her, as his manager, as Aunt Dixie. That'd be great. Probably wouldn't be great, but who cares? It'd be awesome. Have her Do her and... Uh, her and Rebby Hardy, they get along because we're probably going to see Rebby Hardy soon. Yeah, I don't know. I can't wait till he does that, man. I know because he's teased bringing in what did he call a Queen, Queen Rebecca, something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that'd be great. But yeah, bring EC3 into NXT or even up to Maine. Who cares? Yeah, put him on SmackDown too. There you go. <laughs> Just don't handle him better, than Mike Bennett. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a no-brainer. Mike, Mike Bennett came in. He was looking kind of. He didn't look as good as I thought he looked in TNA. You know, he looked yeah. like he was kind of these days. I, he had an Instagram post where he was shredded. Yeah, but the damage might have been done by now. And then plus, they have what do you call when it's four? You know, Maria's got four in there. Oh, she's got a uh, quads, quad, <laughs> quadruplets. Yeah, she's got quadruplets. Well, I didn't know that. That's a nightmare waiting to happen. Yeah, that's a lot of kids. That's a lot of love to go around, man. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Mike Bennett, apparently, he's got super sperm, dude. Holy moly. Holy moly. Wow. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. She posted on Instagram. She said, yeah, it's official. I think. Maybe I dreamt it. I'll just double check. She yeah, said, double check. I'll double check that one. We might be breaking that news here. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> um, As we said, short on news this week. Last story. Yeah. Mixed match challenge update. I believe that's starting the 16th of January. Yeah. Did I get my days right? I think so. Whatever. Um, there's been some team announcements this week. Mm-hmm. They are as follows. Braun, Strowman, and Alexa Bliss. We were both kind of hoping, I think, for Braun and Nia Jax. Yeah. I think they were lobbying for it as well. But oh, now yeah. with the, 
weird that they allowed people to lobby for certain partners and then not follow through with that. I know. It's kind of weird. Um, I think at first Nye was supposed to be partnered with Enzo, mm -hmm. but now I think Enzo is out of Mixed Match Challenge because he was sick. Well, yeah, it's weird. So the, Meltzer mentioned that in the newsletter this week also. He'll totally be cleared. I mean, it, it, we're two weeks away from it. Yeah. And he's basically cleared at this point. But because Angle already said, I'm pulling him and replacing him, I think just they want to get these announcements out of the way, yeah, like yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, that, he's, he's out and somebody else is going to replace him. Hmm. So that's happening. Um, so that'll be an interesting team. You have Braun Strowman, who's enormous, and mm -hmm. Alexa Bliss, who's very small. Yeah. Um, also, <clears throat> the most obvious pairing for SmackDown, Bobby Roode and Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. That is by far the most obvious pairing. Um, close second, Rusev and Lana. They're married. And they, re they re uh, WWE released an awesome video uh, with that announcement. Yeah. Where Aiden English... Gave uh, Rusev the news via song. Mm -hmm. He was happy. Mm -hmm. Rusev, or sorry, Lana. Lana is the best. Do, 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 Lana do, do. is number one. Something like that. He yeah. sang a song. Apparently, I made that up. Uh, I can't believe I made that up. Well, do a Google uh, Google search for it. Okay. Um, Keep talking. Uh, it, it, it kind of almost seemed genuine. Like he didn't know who his partner was until that moment when Aiden English told him, because his reaction seemed very genuine. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then he said, what, we are the world? <laughs> Whispered in her ear, something like that? He started singing, we are the world. But then he didn't like continue the lyrics. <laughs> it's very charming in the Daniel Bryan dances. At the oh, end. yeah. It's all very charming. It's very, it's great. Did you watch the Braun Alexa one? No. Oh, it's so cute because, uh, I don't know, She he, he says, yeah, I, I, he says, this is your partner. And then you just hear Braun yell, Braun! Oh, and then she awesome. freaks out. And she turns around and she's like, just uh, just follow my lead, and we'll uh, and we'll make sure that we're champions. Um, so that was... oh, it's Christy Hemi. Oh, Christy Hemi. All right, with she's got quads with who? Oh, I didn't get. Oh, that and far. X. Oh no, Wait, with who? I don't know. Who's she with? Dan Sperman. Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Well. Good for her. That's a lot of children. That's a that's a ton of kids in one go, man. Yep. Ooh, man. Ooh. I don't know about that. Too many. Yeah. I get those two confused, Canales and Christy Hemi. Both well, they were around the same time. And they're both redheads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, finally, uh, Finn Balor found out who his teammate was, and it wasn't Bailey. I'm telling you, somebody watches this show, man. It's, it's Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks. It's, it's <laughs> freaking Demon Boss, man. It is. Uh, Bailey took Twitter. To uh, express voice her displeasure, her displeasure yeah, man. of this pairing, tweeting, "What the, Kurt? You've got some splaining to do." No kidding. So she wanted to be Finn's partner. I believe they lobbied on Twitter for that mm -hmm. to happen mm -hmm. because they've done uh, stuff in the past in NXT. Yeah, Bailey Balor, of course. Yeah, who we yeah, gotta start man. placing on our rankings of I know. top Balor power rankings. I know. Um. So, so, so who, far, those are the four teams that have been announced. I guess that's what, two two for SmackDown, two for Raw. Who does that leave? Who does that leave for... for, uh, for Potential uh, team-ups? Well, there's Oscar. Yeah. I know Oscar and Goldust have They've been, been lobbying. Stuff they've been doing stuff. On Twitter. Right. Um, who else? Here, click... Was it that link there? In the announcement? No. There's no, in the link they they, on they the have the right. And then there's also like uh and they're supposed to be voting stuff too. Oh, and then the weren't the new day one member of the new day was gonna be in it. Yeah, and they were they were courting um Carmella, I think, in a video. Yes, I remember that. But again, it seems like WWE doesn't really care Whatever about Whatever happens who. on Twitter is not what's actually gonna be happening. Yeah. Well hold on, I have the I have the announcement right here that had the list of of or I thought I did. Dun, 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 there we go. Dun, dun. Put it in. Here we go. These are the people that are going to be involved. Okay. So Alexa Bliss and Strowman, they're partnered up. Balor and Sasha Banks, they're partnered up. So that leaves Alicia Fox, Asuka, Bailey, Goldust, uh, Nia Jax now that Enzo is out, and The Miz. Okay, that's over on that's on Raw. On Raw, yeah, okay. and on SmackDown. SmackDown, who we got? Uh, Becky Lynch, Carmella, Jimmy Uso, Naomi. You got 
assume they're going to be paired up. Yeah. Uh, Natalia, Sami Zayn, uh, Nakamura, and a member of the New Day. Okay, so on Raw, let's see here. Alicia Fox. Uh, and then there's going to be like, what, two fan selections or something like that? Well, I think on Raw, there would have to be now. Well, on here, they have where Enzo was is a, a series of question Big marks. Big question mark. I'm going to say that's going to be Samoa Joe. Okay. I'm going to say, oh, could you imagine if Samoa Joe and Nia Jax were together? Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be great. Um, let's see here. I'm going to say Asuka and Goldust will go together. That sounds yeah. good. And then that would leave Bailey and The Miz. Boy, that's an odd pairing. That is. Bailey and anybody besides Finn Balor is kind of it's an odd kind pairing. kind of weird. Well, I can see Bailey and Goldust. Yeah, I could see that. Could you imagine Samoa Joe and Asuka? Oh, man. Whoa. This, they'd win. They should win. They should win. Let's go to SmackDown. On SmackDown. Uh, so Jimmy is the one who's married to Naomi? I believe so. Okay, so they're out. Uh, Sami Zayn. And Natalia? I know Sami Zayn. Like, Becky Lynch said she wanted Sami as her partner. I know. That'd be way better if they could take Sami Zayn sort of out of canon right now. Yeah. Sami Zayn and Becky Lynch would be a killer But then Becky Lynch team. and Nakamura would be a good team, too. <gasps> Ooh, that'd be a good one. So that would leave Sami Zayn and Natalia. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with Sami Zayn and Natalia. They could both, you know, she's a submission specialist. And he does, I mean, he's like a, he's, he's a all-around dude. So I'd leave a uh, New Day member with Carmella. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. I mean, they're, they've been courting her. Yeah. So that's good. And then who, I don't know who's el- or who's up for the final fan vote on either brand. Yeah, I haven't I really know. been paying that close attention. Me neither. Me neither. Um, they did also announce uh, commentary. The commentary. Beth Phoenix is going to be on commentary. That's cool. That is really cool. It's very exciting. Good for her. I wonder, uh, yeah, this should be interesting. I don't know. My I expectations did, aren't terribly high. I didn't watch the. I did not watch the Bobby Roode Charlotte video. I imagine it was a lot of Bobby Roode awkwardly trying to smile. I watched a little bit of it. They're talking about it makes sense because they have the best robes. Yeah, no, it does make sense. Makes all the sense. It still bugs me how they're going to approach. I mean, I know they're going to do the entrances, just single entrances, but I feel it needs to be more cohesion. There needs. I agree. To come out as a group. I mean, they're supposed to be teams in a mm-hmm. tournament. Yeah, there should be cohesion. Yes. Yeah. What song did Elgin and War Machine come out to? Was it War Machine's song or Elgin's yeah, song? Yeah, I think it was War Machine's. Some of Elgin's video packages being shown in the background. Yeah, oh, okay. Maybe I it was saw, Elgin's. I don't really I know. I saw War Machine's. Like in the, oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, they had War Machine. All right. Maybe Those words. Just, maybe they just did a mashup. Just hit both buttons at the same time. Well, they, Their songs blend well together then. It didn't seem jarring. Yeah, I don't know. Half the songs in New Japan. I'm like, you know, during the New Japan Rumble, like somebody's musical hit, and I'll be like, Cool. I don't know who that is. Oh, yeah. Commentary will be like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's, you know, so-and-so. And And I'm like, I don't know. It's uh, Monster Morning. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And he comes trucking out. Great. Anyways. That's all we got today. That's all we got, man. That's all we got. a little short. I had to really stretch this one out. Anyways. Except for the dirt sheet. Yeah. Congratulations, Christy Hemme. You're about to have a lot of kids. Yeah. But Maria Canellis, congratulations on only having the one that you wanted. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Uh, Thanks. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.